Hello YouTube and welcome back. My name is Josh Kenny, and in this tutorial we'll be going over step by step on how to make a REST API call from your Swift app. Now if you're not familiar with RESTful APIs, uh, let me go over what an API is in layman's terms so maybe that will give you a better understanding of what is going on. So imagine you, the customer, go into a restaurant. You are looking at the menu and you want to order a salad. Okay, so you make that call to the waitress. In this case, the waitress is the API. You tell the waitress, hey, I want a salad. Please go and make this for me. So the, the waitress takes your order, takes it to the kitchen or the web server, and then tells them, hey, this is what we need. The web server returns that to the waitress. The waitress comes back to you with your food delivered as you required or requested. So that is kind of the same sense of what is going on with your API calls. You are needing something. In this case, we are going to pull out a random dog image. So it's going to go over, make the call with the API to the actual web server, say, hey, this is what we need. The web server is going to give us what we need, and it's going to come back to our app, and then we're going to display it in an image. So that is the, basically the sum up of what we'll be doing in this uh, tutorial and now let me show you about the API and what the app is going to look like. So here I have the dog API and if you hit documentation I will link this in the description below as well as the github uh, repo for the actual app uh, but if you go to the documentation there's a few things we can do. We can go to this all breeds and what this will do is list every single dog and all the pictures within each of the dogs that they have on their site or you can go by breed. Now, if you go by breed, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can put in, instead of like a hound, you can do a boxer or a beagle or a lab or whatever dog you would desire that is on their site. And then it'll show you all the pictures they have of those dogs. Now, what we are going to be doing is this random image. And what they actually have right here is what our app will be doing. So we're going to go ahead and make a, or we're going to fetch this. It's going to go out, grab a random dog image, and display it right there. So that is what we'll be doing. And in fact, this is the app here. Uh, very basic, I know, and I did that on purpose. We are not going to be going over how to make the image look pretty or how to make the views look better. We are literally just going to put the basic stuff out there and then focus on the actual calling of the API so you get a very solid understanding of what is going on and how to do that on your own in your own apps. So what I have here is just a photo.fill and a, and a button. So whenever I click on the button, that image is going to change from the photo.fill to a random dog image. It's going to go out, say, hey, we need this random dog, and it's going to give us an error, hopefully not, or it's going to say, yep, we know exactly what you want. It's going to give us that, and it's going to return, and we're going to display right there. And as many times as you can click on this guy, you know, you'll be getting more and more random dog images. So that's the gist of this. Now let's go ahead and open up Xcode and begin our app. Okay, now let's look over at our um, Xcode project. I have a main storyboard that I pulled in an image view and a button. The image view I named photo.fill as far as the image goes. So we can see this that is already given to us by Apple, this initial image. And you can make this whatever you want. You want to do camera? You know, you can change it for the, to the camera one. I personally thought the photo filled that looks the best, so that's why I went with it. The button itself, I just changed from button to show random dog, and then set the constraints for that one. Then I pulled them into this view controller here. I named this the dog image for that UI image view. And then I named the button the show random dog press. Then I added some comments, which we'll go over in a minute. Uh, but that is all I've done. So pause the video here if you'd like. Catch up if you want, or if you want to customize this for your own app, you can do that as well. well. Let's begin. The first thing we want to do is create a response struct. So we know how to make a struct. Go ahead and do that. We're going to name this API. If I can remember how to type. And we're going to make this a type codable. Don't worry about why we do codable. I will explain that when we hit that part in this tutorial. Now, we need to go back to our API here. We're going to grab this random dog um, string here, which is the URL actually, and we we'll already have it pulled up over here. So if I were to paste this, which I'll do again for you, it'll bring up a message and a status. 
Okay, we're not worried about the status in this one because our app is only showing the URL of the dog. So the message is the main thing. So keep this, make sure you spell this exactly the same way it is here or it won't work. If you add an S or an ED or something, it's not gonna work. And then this is a type URL. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna type in let message be a type URL. And then this, let's go to the next step. The next one is we need a URL stream. So we get that by going to this right here, copy. So your API, this is your URL stream that we're calling to get to our next spot here. Um, if you did a list of all dog breeds, you know, it's a little bit different. If you did it by breed, it's different as well. And then right here, this hound, you know, it will show your hound. Here, let's actually look at this real quick so you understand. If I open up this one, you know, and I have a whole bunch of hounds, I can click on one of these and boom, see the hound. Now, if I was to go back and remove hound, and I'm sure they probably have boxer, so let's do boxer, enter. Now it'll show me actual pictures of boxers. So depending on what you're doing, uh, depends on what your URL stream will be. Ours is going to be this random image stream here. So just copy this guy here for this tutorial, and we're gonna make that right here. So we're gonna let API stream equal that uh, string that we just grabbed there, that random. Okay, now next thing is we're not gonna be using anything in our view did load, so we can actually delete that out of here. Um, our fetch photo function that I created, however we will, this will hold all the logic. And this is the actual function that's gonna go out and actually grab the photos for us, or photo, because it's only one at a time. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do here is actually add this guard let statement to convert this URL string that we just created, not API, I'm sorry. It's a URL string. We're gonna convert that URL string to a URL object. Okay, so let's do that here. Um, we are going to do a guard, let, and we're gonna say URL, that's what we want it to be called, is set to URL, and then of type stream, and then we're gonna pass that in, so our URL string. Okay, now if there's an issue, handle it here. Issue converting the URL string to a URL object. Handle here. Okay, so we will handle that by just printing issue convert issue converting the URL stream. Okay, that's all we're gonna do for that. And then we're gonna, of course, return that guard led statement. Okay, now, if everything goes as planned, which it should, we are going to do the next spot. Okay, now let's make our task here. So we are going to go underneath this return statement here and we're gonna say let task equal to a, a URL session that we're gonna create. And then the URL session, we're gonna to go to shared, and then we're gonna go into the data task. And then we're gonna go with the URL and then the completion handler. The URL is the URL we just created. Completion handler, go ahead and hit enter. And then this is going to be a week self. And we're putting a week self here with data um, to prevent a memory leak. Uh, I'm not going to go into this week self, but if you're interested, there are videos out there, and I may also do one as well, but I'll paste this note here so you can see. This is just preventing a possible uh, memory leak. The URL response we're not going to use, and then if you go to error, we're just going to type out error. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at what we're going to do. So, right here, we are going to guard, do another guard let statement again for this data that we're trying to grab and if that is equal to data and the air is not equal to nil then we need to go ahead and handle that so handle air here we're just going to print air and then description or localized description 
And then we could do two question marks and make our own in case there isn't a localized description. So no description. But failed to get data. Cool. And then we want to return because this is, uh, we don't want it to continue if there is an issue or an error. Uh, now let's go underneath here and let's do our actual uh, JSON decoder to get our result back. So we are going to print, I'm going to paste this here so you guys can see. Uh, so whenever we make this call, okay, if it's successful, so this data comes back, there's no issue, that data is now going to be in bytes. We got to take the bytes and say, hey, we need this to be in JSON so we can understand it. Because eventually we're going to turn that into an image, a UI image. So uh, the way we're going to convert this is using a uh, do, uh, do catch. So we're going to do another comment here and say, use a do catch, or I guess use this do catch to try, because you got to try this JSON decoder to take the API response and turn it into what? I just said it a minute ago, from bytes to what? To JSON. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start. And one thing with this is if you go ahead and do a do, and then a catch here, we can start coding. Uh, but your do, you wanna go ahead and do a let the JSON result equal to try the JSON decoder dot decode. Then you can do a from, and what are we gonna kind of decode from? That's gonna be the API response dot self. And then the data is gonna be that data that we just got back. And then now underneath here, we need to go ahead and add the dispatch queue. So dispatch queue. Now we're not going to go on the main thread. We're going to go on the global and then async. And then inside here, we're going to handle this. But in, in a, for a second, I just want to let you know this decoder. I told you I'd mention this in a minute. We need, um, in order to take this from these bytes to this JSON, we can achieve this by using codable. So in order to use this JSON decoder, we needed this to be of type codable. And that's why we did it up here. If this wasn't codable, then JSON decoder wouldn't be able to do this uh, conversion. So keep that in mind, that's really important. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead inside of here and do if let the image data, which is what we wanna get back now, so the data from our image, we're gonna try the data and this is going to be contents of the contents of what exactly and that is going to be the json result that we just got dot message so this right here now we can access this and go to the message that holds that url so json the result dot message and then inside here we're going to go even farther so we're going to go on the main thread now so dispatch queue dot main And then from there, we're gonna do async, and then we're gonna do the conversion here. So convert the image data from JSON to UI image and set it to our dog image. And the dog image is our image view that we set earlier. So image view, so you remember this, and I'll show you that too. If you go up here, I named this dog image, and this is our image view that we drug, we drug over. So now we have that sitting here, um, and now we're gonna actually do this. Now this is really, really easy. All you do is self dot, and we're gonna dog image dot image, and we're gonna set this to be a UI image. And if you add a parenthesis, you can see there is a data one right here. And then we're going to pass that image data that we just converted. And then that should take care of that. Now, after this, you want to go down here to this catch statement and handle any converting issues or errors. 
here. And we're just going to print for now the air. Handle that however you will. And then underneath this, you want to go and do a task.resume. And you do the task.resume because if this task stops, um, once you run this again, you can go to resume and it'll go and pick it back up where it left off. Um, and make sure I did everything correctly there. And that is looking good. Um, we're actually needing to put this here. Yeah, so that should be good. What did I mess up on here? Let's see. Closure, task before it's declared. I need a second task. This. I think I added too many brackets. There it is. Okay, so now we need to do the fourth step, which is the call to fetch uh, photos here. So we're going to do fetch photos. We're going to call that here. And now we're going to run. Running. And we are going to hit the button. And there we go. We are doing it. And that is going to do it for this video. I hope this was beneficial. And I know it did take a little bit longer, but I wanted to break down each section so you understood what was going on and you had those comments to look back on and remind yourself of what to do in a REST API call situation. Okay, so if you like this video, give it a like with that uh, thumbs up button. If you want to see my upcoming content, you ring that bell, which you probably already know and you should do. And as always, if you haven't yet, please, please, please go out and subscribe to the channel as that helps me get my information and my content out to others to possibly help them as well. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.